All right, folks, welcome back. This is Bellatro every day, and today I'm going to teach you some advanced Bellatronomics. So forget about gold stake. We want to play entirely unencumbered. We want to talk about how do we get these crazy high scores? How do we beat some of these higher antes? And maybe the place to start is how do we even read these scores here? And so on ante 13, you need to score 47 billion points for the small blind, and then the boss is going to be twice as much. In ante 14, when this says E13, that means 10 to the 13th power. So this is 29 trillion points that I need. And then the difference between E13 and E16, that's three additional digits. So that's a thousand times bigger. Difference between E16, E20, that's four extra digits. So that's 10,000 times bigger. And if you just wanna score a billion points, there's a lot of different ways that you can score a billion points in the game. But if you wanna score some of these higher scores if you want to beat some of these higher blinds what you're going to need is some very specific technology and so primarily what we're looking for are repeated multiplication so rather than like this plus four molt from this molt card or even like you know plus a hundred molt from some scaled up joker what we're looking for is just a bunch of these a bunch of times twos from maybe glass cards you know, if I have five glass cards, if I have five instances of times two, times two, times another times two, that's exponential growth, right? That's very big and can keep getting even bigger. If I add some steel cards, one steel card is times 1.5. If I have two steel cards, that's times 2.25 is close to a times two. If I have four steel cards, that's a times five total. Now, you know, if I play all of these glass cards, you can only play five cards in one hand, right? And you can only have, you know, your hand size is like eight or nine or something like that. So you can't hold that many steel cards in your hand and you only have like five, maybe six jokers. And so what we need to do is we need to find a way to score more with the limited resources that we have. And one way to do that is with you know something like this we can get red seals so whatever kind of multiplicative effect that we already have we can reactivate it and then that way we can score more with the same number of cards the limited number of cards if i have a bunch of red glass cards now each glass card red glass card is a times four and if i have five of those times fours that's the same as 32 squared that's the same as two to the tenth power that's a thousand times from now these five cards. Um, you can also do red steel cards for the held in hand effect will also be re-triggered. Um, we can also, you know, put additional effects on our cards. We can talk about polychrome cards. So not polychrome jokers, but polychrome playing cards, you know, very similar to glass cards. They give you additional times 1.5 and then you can reactivate that. You can re-trigger that with the red seals. Now let's talk about jokers. And so if I'm looking for, you know, more of these repeated multiplications one way to do that is with the bloodstone and so the bloodstone gives us it's a one in two chance but it will hit enough of the time and it's going to be times 1.5 per heart or times 1.5 every two hearts on average and so if you just play five hearts maybe that's not going to be very much but if you have five hearts and they're all red seals you're activating 10 total times then this is going to stack up you know all of these multiplicative bonuses you can also you know with the hanging chad here get re-triggers you know additional activations of your glass cards and polychrome cards and then also this your bloodstone here and so you know when we're thinking about okay if i just want to set up if i want to start you know some very high scoring run you know some endless run what jokers am i building towards in the future because the way that these endless runs work out is you will have enough time you'll have enough money you'll have enough shops whatever jokers you're looking for you'll find it eventually you're not going to get it you know early on necessarily but you'll find it eventually and so it's safe enough it's correct to oh i should just build hearts every time and eventually i can get the bloodstone and so you know, maybe that's something that we'll do. We'll think about, you know, building hearts. We can also think about, you know, what rank we want to build around. Another way to get a multiplicative bonus is with the idol. So if you don't already know the way that the idol works is it every round picks a random card in your deck. And if you have more copies of one card, then it's more likely to pick that one, you know, sort of uniform through your whole deck. And so if your deck is all of one card all the same suit all the same rank then it doesn't change it just picks that same card every time 
And so this is probably like one of the more consistent ways to score very high. You know, all of these times twos, that's equal to like four hearts on the bloodstone because the bloodstone is only, you know, one in two chance and it's only times 1.5. Um, the only challenge then is you need to do the due diligence. You need to do the deck manipulation so that you have all of one rank and all of one suit. And in the context of like a long endless run, you can do that. It is achievable, but it's not easy. It does take time for you to get there. And so, you know, the reward is great. The reward is great for, um, you know, doing the deck manipulation. Also on top of this, Okay, if I want to get additional re-triggering effects, one way to do that is we said with the Chad here, you can also go for something like Sock and Buskin, re-triggering all of your face cards. You can go for something like um, Hack, re-triggering all of your low cards, two through five here. And so whichever one shows up, that's the one that you build around. You're like, okay, well, if I see Hack, then I'm going to build around Hack and I'm going to build around the low cards. And, you know, just having hack and having the idol, like that's enough of a combo. I don't need to worry about face cards. I don't need to worry about socking busket. But, you know, sort of like from the beginning of a run, I don't know if I'm going to get hack or sock and busket. I don't know if I'm supposed to go for the low cards or the high cards, the face cards. Well, one reason to go for the face cards, you can also do this. You can also get the Baron. It is a rare Joker, but, you know, in the context of a long endless run, it is, it'll come up often. And so you'll see kings. We can build around kings. Kings are face cards for Sock and Buskin. Um, this rewards us for holding cards in hand rather than playing them. So, you know, completely different build compared to, you know, going for the re-triggering glass cards, for example. But I think it's worth it to do both. And so from the beginning of the run, I don't know exactly what jokers I'm going to find. So I want to build in a certain way that I'm sort of open to whatever possibilities. And you know, one of the benefits of doing this with the held in hand kings, if we go to the planet cards here, so if I'm comparing high card playing just one card compared to flush five, if I play one card, I can hold on to four extra cards compared to if I play the flush five, I'm playing five cards. And normally playing more cards is better because I can have more glass cards, I can have more polychrome cards, but you know, having the extra cards held in hand could be worthwhile as well. So, you know, if I compare flush five to high card here, if I compare the planet cards, I have three times as much molt for Eris. I have five times as many chips. So three times as much molt, five times as many chips. My flush five is going to be long-term worth 15 times as much as high card, which seems like a lot, but maybe it's only 15 times more. Whereas if I play the high card and I have four cards held in hand and I have the Baron that gives me the times 1.5 on my Kings and I have, you know, maybe red seal Kings, maybe I have steel Kings, those extra four cards held in hand that could contribute more than the 15 times difference between playing high card versus playing flush five. And so both of these builds are viable. You know, which one is stronger is just going to depend on which jokers you actually find in your run. Um, other things that we're looking for, you know, maybe Brainstorm and Blueprint to just copy whatever our best jokers are. And, you know, early on the focus is going to be on the deck manipulation so that we can enable the idol. And so maybe, you know, we're looking for something like Cardomancer early on. And then, you know, once we have the deck constructed, once we have our resources, our money online, then we can start re-rolling and then get the goods later on. So. The plan is we're going to jump in here um, in the future. I'm going to try out different decks and, you know, different decks are going to have different strengths in the context of, you know, whatever you might be going for with your long endless runs. But for a baseline here for the first lesson, let's start on the starter deck here. Jump in with the red deck. All right, here we can take a skip for a double tag. And so something to consider is if I am playing for a long endless run, a lot of the skip tags are going to be bad, but there is going to be maybe a skip tag that is good, a skip tag that is worth it. And if there's even just one that's worth it, then this is going to double up and give me more of whatever that one, whatever that best one is. And like in the context of just like going to anti-8, 
that one good skip in the future maybe doesn't happen. But in if we're going to anti-12 or anti-14, maybe it does happen. Maybe what I want to do is I want to go for, in the collection here, maybe I want to go for a negative tag. Take the double tag now because I can get the negative tag in the future. I'm here to tell you that that's not a good plan. That's actually not good. Um, there's actually no skip tags that are worth it in the context of, you know, a fully optimized, mega long, endless run, super high score run. And so if I take the double tag, giving me double of what the best tag is, it's still not good enough to justify skipping. When you skip, you lose reward money, you lose money from having leftover hands, you lose interest money. Um, not just the money that you lose, you skip, you don't get to see the shop, you don't get to see the jokers in the shop, you don't get to see the booster packs. And so just being able to refresh the booster packs, like that's worth like five or $10 worth of value just to see more booster packs. And you know, when you reroll in the shop, the cost increases every time you reroll. And so it's better to spread out your rerolls between multiple shops, like that's also savings, that's money there. And so, there really isn't anything that's worth skipping for. Also, I think, you know, a common misconception is if I skip now, I'm thinking of it in terms of, you know, how much am I getting, how much value per round right now? And then is the skip tag worth, you know, whatever value that I miss out on right now? But really what's happening is when I skip, all the scoring requirements become bigger now and for the future. So if I skip, all future scoring requirements are all 50% bigger and you know is whatever bonus i get from skipping is it worth 50 percent more score than what i'm currently doing the answer is probably not if i skip now we think of it in terms of i'm losing the current round but actually what's happening is i'm losing a future round you know the end comes at me one round faster so there's a future round where i'm earning four or five hundred dollars per round and i don't get to see that future round if i take the skip now so we're just gonna never skip, that's it. Easy as that, that's easy, right? Now, in the first round here to score 300 points, all we have to do is get a high straight or a high flush. Maybe it's not too hard to go for the high straight here. Um, we're looking for a jack. The odds of us getting the jack are the same as getting a full house. You know, we only have the four jacks left in the deck, but we are playing on the red deck for the extra discard. So I'm gonna go for it. One more time looking for that jack. The odds are not good, I'll admit, but if I am planning for a long endless run, if I don't get it, we could just reroll. We could just restart. Like if you're going to play a long run, if you're going to dedicate two to four hours to just one run, you know, start off on a good note. All right. How do we want to start here? So Telescope is particularly good, could be very powerful, you know, giving us the planet cards. You know, all of this, all of these multiplications, you know, times two for all of our glass cards and our steel cards, this is multiplying whatever our base is. And so something that's gonna be very important is to get a lot of planet cards to level up the base. And then once you have like the base is 20, then now times two and times two and times two on top of that 20 is very important. So telescope is good for that. Um, I think I'd rather actually, instead of taking the telescope, I'd rather just get my money online, get my resources online. So maybe superposition as like a value generator, as a money generator, I think is fine. Getting the tarot cards to help with the deck manipulation. I don't think we need this judgment though it is only three bucks and the worst case scenario is you get a joker that you don't want and you can sell it for two bucks um there are a few jokers that sell for one dollar but most of them sell for two bucks so maybe we take judgment here judgment gives us droll joker which we don't really need and probably we should sell early on we don't really need that much score help and then also with superposition here, I'm not necessarily trying to score, you know, right away. What I'm trying to do is play multiple straights so that I can get multiple tarot cards. You know, a thing to think about if we are planning for long endless runs or just like in general, even if you're only playing to anti-8, 
you don't need to score the most each round you only need to score enough in order to survive and dedicate the rest of your resources the rest of your hands toward you know just getting investing in your future investing in your ability to score more in the future investing in tarot cards for the deck manipulation that's going to enable us to use the idol in the future or maybe not use the idol maybe use you know get a lot of kings so uh, I'm just gonna go next here saving my money for interest. There is a consideration for you know, do I want this buffoon pack? There's a good chance that we get a common joker. A lot of the common jokers give us money And so maybe that's something that we want early on Maybe some reason to hold on to the money here um, I am going to see another shop and I'll have another opportunity to buy jokers So I don't need this, you know, and then also maybe I save the money for the telescope in the next shop depending what I get off of superposition. Let's find out. All right, let's go for, it looks like the high straight. If I want to be safe, I could play the full house now and then dig for the high straight after. I'm just gonna go straight for the high straight here. There we go. You know, early on in your endless run, like I said, if you're going to play just one run for two to four hours take bigger risks at the beginning and if you don't get the good stuff then just restart right uh, we get a hierophant here i can go again for the high straight or i can go for a low straight now right so we already did the high one maybe we do the low one we're missing a five and we're missing well we have all of our threes so yeah, maybe we'll go for the low straight now. I just need the five. We do pick up the five here and we pick up the ace. So now all we need is the three and we have several of those in the deck. So let's just keep looking for that three. Perfect. Now another thing to consider here I could sell Hierophant for a dollar. I could use it to help me score. I don't need it to score. I don't need the dollar for interest. I'm gonna hold on to the Hierophant. That way, superposition, it'll give me a different tarot card. And so this is a common concept that we think about is if I'm holding on to a tarot card, there can't be any duplicate tarot cards, so I'm not gonna see another Hierophant. Hierophant is something that I don't want to see. What I wanna see are the money generating tarot cards, death cards, hangman, that sort of thing. Moon might be okay. You know, at some point we want to try to make the flush house. We said probably what we want to do is build towards hearts for the possibility that we get the bloodstone, or maybe we just get the bloodstone and we should build around hearts. Maybe that's what we will do. Um, I was going to say, you know, I can use this to set up a flush five even without hearts, and then maybe it's fine. Something about the Bloodstone is like, it's not very good early on. And then, you know, only really becomes good once you have more and more re-trigger effects, you know, like Red Seals, like Sock and Buskin, like Hack, um, becomes better once your base is higher, right? And so if I just play a flush, this four times 1.5, that's only plus two. And then times 1.5 again, that's only another plus three. Like that's not very good even if I do play all hearts. But we can make this work. I guess a consideration is if I don't need this now, maybe I don't take this now. And then maybe it comes back in the future, maybe it doesn't come back either way is probably fine. What's the boss situation here? The boss says all diamonds are debuffed. I think I'm gonna pass on the bloodstone. Like I said, it's not very good right now. We can find it again in the future. And I think that's going to be, you know, a lot of the way that you think about a long endless run is like, oh, I can just get it in the future with enough money in the future. All right, here, I do want the devil card. I do want the gold card. So I want to get rid of one of these. I'm trying to decide between clubs and bonus cards. For this boss here, 600 points. I don't currently have anything that's going to help me score. I'm going to... I'll use the Hierophant to help me score. So let's get rid of the moon here and pick up the devil. And then, do I want this telescope? It is gonna cost me a lot of money. It's gonna cost me a lot of interest here, potentially. I think it's worth it. I think it's powerful enough. I think it's gonna be worth it. 
though admitting, you know, not only does it cost me $2 interest right now, but that interest earns further interest in the future, like it's compounding. And so this telescope by picking up here, this cost me 20 bucks to pick it up. Is it worth 20 bucks for the telescope? Maybe. I think also then by buying the telescope now, in the future, I have the opportunity to get the upgraded telescope voucher. In the future, also the telescope won't show up again, right? And then so, you know, I'll get some other better things in the future. So let's just go next. All right, the thing I'm looking to do here is again, play the straight for superposition. So uh, we'll go for the five. We do get the five. Um, if I play this straight, it's not going to win. I could make some bonus cards and then I think it would win. Maybe, actually maybe not. So I need 150 chips. I think either way what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about what card do I wanna make into gold? Maybe what we do is this. I think I'm gonna go five and three into bonus cards because these are the low cards for hack, specifically if I get the hack instead of sock and buskin if I get hack. Um, so I'm gonna target these rather than putting it on the ace. I think this doesn't score 600 points. And then so I can hold on to the gold card here. I want to not score on purpose so that I can try to play another straight and get more value from my super position. Perfect. All right, so now we can go for the high straight or another low straight. If we go for the high straight, we only have two jacks left in the deck, but also we only have two aces left in the deck. If we go for the low straight, we have three twos and three fives. So I think it's gonna be easier for us to go for the low cards. Let's set that up. Um, either way, we don't wanna do both. I don't wanna hold on to the queen, king, queen, four, and three. Um, you need to decide you know, what is going to be the hand and then maximize the chances of getting that one rather than trying to go for two different things and then you're gonna fail at both things. All right, let's continue going for the high cards. Sorry, the low cards, trying to find that two. We do get the two, we do get the ace here. Um, once again, let's see here. What do we wanna turn into gold? I think what I wanna do is I wanna turn a five into gold. I'm trying to decide between five spades or five clubs. Let's make it a five of clubs. Here's why I'm targeting the five, and I've said this in my other videos. Put the gold card on a card that you never discard. And so I don't, or I try not to discard fives because I want to hold on to my fives for superposition. And sometimes you get in a situation where you play the card, like you get the gold card and it's like, ah, nuts, I have to play it as part of my straight. But if that card were a different card, let's say it were an eight of hearts, instead right let's say this was the gold card so instead of like oh i'm forced to play the gold card if i have the eight instead then i just don't have any straight and then i just lose and so it's better to put the gold cards on cards that you never discard if i put on eight it's effectively the same as playing with minus one hand size so let's play the straight here and then collect our money and then also there's the chance in the future we get a death card and what do I wanna copy? Maybe I wanna copy more fives. We can use the wheel here or we can sell it for a dollar. I think between these two options, it's probably better to just sell it. Long term, the, you know, if we get foil cards, holographic, even if we get polychrome, long term, this is not gonna be that helpful you know, after we have all of these multiplicative bonuses from all our glass and steel cards. So we can just sell this. I guess we don't have to sell it right now. We can still hold on to it, blocking duplicates from the shop. We could pick up the pants here. We could pick up the extra hand size. So, you know, some things on my mind right now. If I do want to go for like a long endless run, you know, things like the idol, not very useful early on. 
right? This is something that you have to build towards and it doesn't become online until like anti nine or 10 usually. Um, things like, you know, even the Baron is not necessarily very powerful early on. And so what I need early on is what is the one Joker that's gonna score all of my points early on? Because if I can rely on that one Joker, then I can use the rest of my slots for money generators, for value generators. So maybe the pants is exactly that kind of thing. Obviously the pants doesn't contribute to my flush five plan, but early on, maybe I don't play flush five anyway. So maybe I want the pants, maybe I want the troubadour here. Extra hand size is gonna make it easier for me to get my super position value. In the next round, we need 800 points, which is currently two, no, that's two and a half straights or a straight with these bonus cards. So maybe I need the pants in order to just survive the next round. Um, I could do this. I could take the hieroglyph minus one hand. That's gonna help with the scoring requirements. I think, I think I'm gonna, you know, one thing that's nice about the pants too is, you know, even though two pair is incompatible with straights, you can level this up by playing two pair, but then you can score by playing straights, right? Um, we do have the telescope and I've played five straights now. I've played only straights now. And so I could take a celestial pack for a Saturn card to help me score rather than pick up the pants here. I think that's what I'm gonna do actually. So let's take the celestial pack. That's another way to go about it. Rather than try to score with like a one very powerful Joker, if I just level up my straights, I can win with just straights. And then I don't need any Jokers for points. I could just use only Jokers for value. I think Troubadour is worth it for the extra hand size. And then let's go next. So now we can probably, almost certainly, I don't want this coupon tag because I want to try to get the superposition value here. Um, yeah, I can I could probably play two straights and then two straights will definitely be enough points. So I'm missing a five if I want to go for the low straight. I'm missing a king or a jack. I think here what I want to do, let's throw the 10 and go for the five. We do get the five. Um, I'm not going to play the bonus five because I don't need the points. And I'm not going to make clubs. I'm going to, you know, maybe we still get the bloodstone in the future. Maybe we still go for hearts in the future. So maybe we sell the moon here. Question is whether or not we want the dollar from the wheel. And the answer is probably we want the dollar, that dollar that can give us interest and maybe turn into another dollar. But I'm going to hold on to it in case there's a duplicate here. We get strength. Now, if I wanna go for the high straight here, I could do it. How do I wanna use my strength card? Like in general, how do I wanna use a strength card? Well, I could think about going for lots of kings for my flush five plan. You know, maybe we get the Baron in the future instead of hack, instead of going for the low cards, we go for the high cards. I think generally that's a good plan. So what I'm looking for now to get my super position value, I'll just play the low straights and then at the same time, manipulate my high cards to make more kings, turn queens into kings and not play high straights. So let's discard the jacks and then go for another low straight. We just need a three and an ace. So that's the same as going for the ace and the 10. Okay, so we got the four here. Let's continue discarding, looking for my three, and then also looking for queens that I can turn into kings. We get the three, I get the queens that I can turn into kings now. I'm holding on to the wheel to block duplicates. Play the straight. We get another moon card. A little bit awkward, you know, we threw one away and we get another one, but that's okay. We could take the ticket here. I think the ticket is like pretty powerful. 
but maybe it's a little bit too early for the ticket. Though if we get the extra tarot cards from super position, maybe then it's easier for me to get more gold cards in the future. Maybe then, you know, instead of holding on to this five, we can play the five. That's also a good reason to like put the gold onto cards that you plan on playing is because the ticket is a common and so it comes up very often. I think what I want to do here is I want to skip the ticket so that I can hold my money for interest here. To get 1200 we can still, it's just two straights, so that's all it takes. Um, I'm going to skip these Arcana packs so that I can buy the Hieroglyph in the next shop. We want to make sure, you know, after the big blind we buy the Hieroglyph. So let's go next. Alright, I have Queens turned into Kings, so let's go for the low cards again. Uh, we have extra fours in hand. Let's discard an extra four. Hmm. Yeah, one more time. We don't need an extra five. Having trouble getting the low cards here. I think it's still worth it to throw away an ace. Okay, ace, two, three four five i'm going to i'm going to play both of the bonus cards here if i do score 1200 points if i win in one hand then i'm actually fine with that because it's going to be kind of annoying for me to get another straight from here to be honest i am i'm going to use the wheel so it's not going to be very useful later on but i don't necessarily need the dollar and there's a chance that it could help us out here, help us win in one hand instead of going for another straight, which would be kind of annoying. If we do win in one hand, we also get the money from the gold card. Foil is fine. Um, I'm not gonna use the moon card. Again, I wanna go for hearts and I wanna go for kings. There we go. Winning in one hand there, we get three bucks from the gold card. We also get extra money from having an extra hand left over. Um, I do want this hieroglyph, then I can beat the boss in just one hand. Um, yeah, then also I could consider I can take the celestial pack here. I think we don't need it right away, so maybe I'm not going to take it. I do, you know, we do have the, um, we do have the telescope here for our straight, so we're guaranteed a Saturn card but maybe it's more important for us to get our money online earlier. You know, if we are playing on the low stakes, if we are playing on white stake, the scoring requirements are not that big each round after round. And so we can really get away with a lot of stuff, to be honest. I'm gonna use the wheel for the same reason that I used the first wheel here. And it hits, that's great. It's not polychrome, but actually uh, right now, the plus 10 holographic is actually huge, to be honest. Keep holding on to the moon card so that I don't spawn any more moon cards. We don't need Scholar, so we can just go next here. Okay, so I don't have, I just had the four, but I have four discards, right? So let's just straight up, let's dig for the low cards. Looking for the three. Um, I don't need extra twos, so I'll discard like this. We have the three, now just looking for the ace. I don't need an extra five. Uh, I do have the queen here, but I guess I don't need that either. We just need the one straight. Didn't get the ace. Play only one hand type. Hmm, that's awkward. With the holographic plus 10 here and the foil and the bonus cards here and we did the hieroglyph and so this is only 600 points. Two pair will work, two pair will clear. So I guess we'll do that. We did have a straight, you know, with the six, two through six and we threw away the six. That's actually fine. I actually knew already, you know, the Plus 10 and then plus 50 already, this is 60 points on its own, so it doesn't matter what hand we play. But that, you know, we can be a little bit more careful in the future. 
Astronomer is pretty solid, giving us free celestial packs. So as like a money generator, it's not the best, but it does generate value. Also, planet cards in the shop, we can just buy them and sell them for a dollar. Also, holographic, you know, for scoring requirements, I think this is totally fine. Um, unfortunately, again, it's, you know, harder for us to get interest here. I would prefer one of these jokers to be something that gives me money, but, you know, you do what you got to do. Um, I'll tell you right now, you know, as far as like, can I tell if this is going to be a good start to an endless run? Not a great start, but it could still be fine. Uh, we don't need to take any skips here. We want to see more shops so we can have a better chance of getting celestial packs and getting the superposition value. Um, I'm looking for here. I already have the ace. Let's get the two. Um, I don't need extra fives. I only need one straight or I only get to play one straight and then it'll end the round. All right, do I have, I have the gold card in hand already. So if we play the straight, that's it. All right, so 4,500 points there for the low straight. That's with the help of the bonus card. So let's say we got 4,000 points for a straight. That's enough to win like the next five rounds. Something important to pay attention to. Um, another consideration here, we had $4 here. We could have sold the moon for an extra dollar and an extra dollar of interest, so worth two dollars. Um, the reason we're holding on to the moon is so that we can, you know, there's not going to be any moon cards in the future. That's not one that I want, so we're going to block the duplicate tarot cards. I think it's probably better. It's worth it to get the extra two bucks. It's better to sell it. Um, I was just, you know, was paying more attention to playing straights rather than like paying attention to my money. Um, steel cards are powerful. In the end, we want to get a lot of steel cards, but maybe right now I'm focused on getting money. Money for deck manipulation. I'm looking for hangman and death cards before I start doing this. I'm looking for gold cards before I start doing this. So I'm not going to pick up the chariot here. Madness, I don't want to remove the jokers that I have. Celestial pack is free, so of course we do it and we pick up the Saturn card here. Um, I think standard pack is not worth our money yet so let's try to save our money for interest i will use the judgment for a joker that we can sell for two bucks or we get the runner is actually just great with the current plan that we have playing straights even though we're playing straights right now we're still building towards flush five in the future that's the plan just like you know you start out playing straights and you transition into um you know straight flushes for example. All right. Let's go for the low cards once again. There exists a situation where if I get the queen in the starting hand, you know, I only have two queens, but if I start with the queen, I can go for the high straight. Um, but if I'm missing the queen, then the chances of me getting it are not great. So we do have the straight in hand and it is a winning hand already. So I want to discard first to find my gold card and throw away all these extras. We're just going to win in one. One more time looking for the gold card. There it is. And then now we can play. Keep holding on to the moon. Let's see here. We get $3 takes us up to $11. The gold cards happen before interest is calculated. Moon would take us up to $12, so it's no difference between $11 or $12. Let's just play the straight. $5,000 points, even without any enhanced cards, so that's good to keep in mind. Uh, Hangman is great. Free Celestial Pack. I definitely want that. Next devious joker to help our straights i actually don't want this I actually i'm kind of scoring too many points i i want to be able to play two straights every round instead of just one straight every round but i am going to hold on to troubadour is good the extra hand size to help us make straights with superposition astronomer is good because i get the freebies you know that's a value generator maybe runner we could sell but i'm going to hold on to this because it's going to help us later on 
Maybe if I do sell it, I can get extra interest, actually. Question is, do I want this Arcana pack? If we do open this Arcana pack, it is going to maybe score, or no. If I open the Arcana pack, it's gonna cost me interest here. The question is like, is it worth the interest? Is it worth like $6 for this Arcana pack? My answer is probably worth it. If my Celestial packs are free, if I don't have to worry about that, if I'm only buying one booster pack per shop, maybe one if I see an Arcana pack, then I can afford this. Okay, these are great options here. Let's check out the boss. The boss says spades are debuffed. Okay, so I want to build around kings for the Baron, or I can build around the low cards, two through five, and I can get hack with my idol and my glass cards. So sevens we remove. Normally, if the thing that you're going for are straights, you know, with um, without superposition, if I'm just generically going for straights, you keep the middle cards and you remove the outer cards. I'm actually gonna do the riskier thing. I'm gonna do the opposite thing because of superposition. I'm gonna remove the middle cards and then go for the outer cards. We're scoring enough points where just like one straight wins every round. So my deck doesn't need to be that much more consistent. We do the hangman here. Question is, do we use the Fool to give us another Hangman, or do we use Death to give us a second 5 for more money? And then also potentially we could play the 5 and helps us make our straight. For me personally, I think the more important thing to do is just go for the card removal. So having less cards in the deck is going to help us find the 5 more often than having an extra 5 is. Also, if I get like a blue seal in the future, if I get a red seal in the future, I'm going to want to draw those cards more consistently. So let's take the hangman here. Um, some consideration for do I want to use the moon? And we said we're going for hearts because of the bloodstone, possibly the bloodstone. I don't know if we'll get it. And then with that, we said we don't want the devious joker. I think I'm going to sell the runner. Yeah, I think we sell the runner. We get more interest here. Go next. Um, I don't want this. I don't want the planet merchant. What I want, you know, this adds planet cards to the shop so you get less jokers on average. I want the jokers so that I can find the rare ones. Do I want six cents? This has kind of two benefits. One benefit being I get to remove sixes from the deck. That's great. Also, I get to get spectral cards. So I can get, you know, what am I hoping to get? There's a lot of spectral cards and there's a lot of bad spectral cards, but maybe what I'm looking for, I could get a Wraith for some rare jokers, try to get Blueprint, Brainstorm, Baron, Ectoplasm for a negative joker. If I do get Ectoplasm, I'm probably not gonna use it right away. Um, I'm looking for Immolate mostly, that's probably the best. You can't get the Soul, you can't get the Black Hole, these only come from booster packs. Maybe getting seals are all actually pretty good. A little bit awkward that we only have two hands. The question is, if I play just one card, if I play just one six, is that going to be too many points with, you know, 50 chips times 20 molt with two holographics here? 50 times 20, how much is that? Uh, that's a thousand points, so we should be safe. I think I do want this value generator, six cents, though I'm not gonna hold on to it very long. I don't want the score from the Devious Joker. Let's just go next. Okay, so for starters, I'm gonna use the Hangman. I'm going to remove the 10 and the seven here. And then I'm going to play the six. And so by using the hangman first, by removing two cards and then playing the six, I get to redraw three cards instead of just redrawing one card. And this should not win, or at least that's the plan. Nice. And then now I can play the straight if I want. Um, but before I do that, let's go ahead and dig. Let's find the gold card for the money. Here's a, almost a straight here. We do get the money and that's it. We did the thing. 
So here, do I want to use this ectoplasm? The answer is no. I don't want to use this ectoplasm, but I do want to hold on to this ectoplasm. So let's sell the moon. I guess there's a consideration for if we sell ectoplasm and we get five bucks here or three dollars, we go up to fifteen dollars. We get an extra dollar of interest. Let's sell the moon and then ace two, three, four, five. Cool, we get Judgment. Okay, I have an Arcana pack, I have a paintbrush. Paintbrush is huge, hugely beneficial. Short term, it's gonna help us make our straights. Long term, it's gonna help us, you know, have extra gold cards for money. Even like longer, longer term, if I do get the Baron and I have the extra hand size, that's huge. If I use Ectoplasm, having the extra hand size allows me to get extra Jokers. So that's all that's great. Um, I do have these planet cards are free from the astronomer here. Do we want to level up our straight flushes? I think the answer is no, I don't need to do that. Um, so, trying to think, if I use the Arcana pack, let's use the Arcana pack first. Here's why. The Arcana pack could give us a fool. It's a 1 in 7 chance to give us a fool. And the last card that we used was a hangman. I would like to get another hangman. Rather than if I use the judgment here, I'll get a copy of the judgment. We are losing a little bit of interest. I've said this before, but it's worth it. The Arcana packs are enough worth it. I think an Arcana pack is worth six or seven bucks. All right, I have death. I can choose to make another ace or another king or another five. I think what I want to do is make another king. So let's do that. I don't want to make more aces because long term I'm going to get rid of the aces anyway. I could make an extra five. But since we already started with the kings, let's just make more kings. Um, now if I'm going to use the death card, I will use judgment first and then I'll use death after. Having the burnt joker with all of the extra hand size, I can level up my straights pretty consistently. Like that's very powerful. That's not the kind of thing that I want to make negative because I'm going to sell it later. You know, you get diminishing returns on leveling up your hands here. You know, let's say, let's say you get level 10, whatever it is, right? Level 10 straights. Then it takes you another five planet cards in order for you to get 50% more chips, 50% more molt. In total, that's like, you know, times... 2.25 to what you're currently doing. So it takes you five additional planet cards to multiply your score by two, by times 2.25. And then once you have 20 planet cards, once you have level 20, it takes an additional 10 in order to multiply your score by two. You know, once you have uh, level 50 straights, it takes another 25 cards in order to multiply your hand or multiply your score by two. And so, you know, in that way, these additional additive bonuses from leveling up your poker hands are going to fall off later and so burnt joker is not the kind of thing that you want to hold on to for very long but for right now sure why not let's turn a jack into a king do i have a preference between hearts or spades let's go with spades keeping the hearts i guess Okay, do I want this right away? Do I want the paintbrush? Um, I think we can survive without it. And if we can survive without it, then I'm just gonna go next here. That way we get more interest. All right, in the next round, one straight still wins. Um, I can go threes, fives. Now. I think the hand that I want to discard, I want to start by discarding high card for my burnt choker. So there is a consideration for, you know, should we try to discard straights? Should we try to level up straights? If we are going to go for Baron with the held in hand build, then we want to level up our high card. So let's start doing that now. 
You know, that's the thing if you're going for like these long endless runs, you really have to be aware of the entire Joker pool, the entire realm of possibilities. That way you can build around those different future possibilities. Leave yourself open to whatever comes your way. All right, I can play the straight and we know it's going to be a winning hand. Let's try to find a six first. Uh, one more time looking for the six, also looking for a gold card. We don't get the six, we don't get the gold card, we play the straight. If the straight doesn't work, it's a level four straight, so it's definitely going to work, but if it doesn't work, we know that any card, holographic plus foil here is worth a thousand points, regardless. Again, here we're missing out on interest by not selling the ectoplasm. Maybe something to consider when we do this in the future, when we do the six cents in the future, this ectoplasm is gonna block a duplicate ectoplasm and maybe that's worth it. Worth the extra dollar that we miss out on. All right, walkie talkie, we've demonstrated that we don't need. I'm gonna open the celestial pack and you know, long term, I said I want to level up my high card, but short term, I'm going to keep leveling up my straights. If there were an Eris card here, if there were a flush five, I would level up flush five rather than leveling up my Saturn card. You know, each it, each Pluto card gives you very, very little. And so, you know, if you do want to level up your high card, you got to take them eventually. You got to level it up eventually. But since each one does very little, most of the time I'm picking other things over Pluto. Pluto is the last thing that I pick. It is the bottom of the pick order. Even if I am going for high card eventually, even if that is the long-term plan. Um, do I want the paintbrush now? Costing me a little bit of interest or do I want to open the Arcana pack now? I think I want to open the Arcana pack. Um, do I want this tower card now? I think what I want to do, let's go ahead and open the Arcana pack. All right, Fool gives me another Saturn card. I accept, I accept a Saturn card. So let's sell the Hierophant and pick up a Saturn card here. We can level up our straights. I am going to pick up the tower. And so I said, you know, the way that the, the way that the idol works is it picks a random card in your deck. If you have stone cards in your deck, the stone cards will not be selected. And so we can use the tower to turn something into stone. That's the same as removing it from our deck. Um, also, if I have stone cards and I play high card, you know, my high card is better then it contributes towards my Baron plan. If that's the plan, um, we're not going to buy the paintbrush yet. We're going to wait until we have one more shop after we beat the big blind here. So let's just go next. All right, what I can do, I want to go for, I had the six here for the sixth sense. I want to use my discards first just to make sure, just to make sure that I get my straight. Um, I'm going to turn this nine into stone. And then that way, when I do this discard here, it counts as high card. Okay, we do pick up the three. So let's play the six now. Okay, we have the trance, we have a blue seal. That's great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discard looking for my gold card and maybe I make a blue gold card. We do get the blue gold card. I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, lock it in. And then play the straight. So, you know, maybe now a consideration if I do play the straight, I do want to get the blue seal. I do want to get the Saturn card for my scaling. You know, currently my straights are winning even without any jokers and I want to keep that trend going. I want to be able to win without any jokers. That way I can have all my jokers be these like money generators, value generators. Do I want to use the ectoplasm here? I think I want to sell the ectoplasm. I know I've been holding on to it and I've been by not selling it, missing out on like a dollar of interest here and there. 
but I'm gonna sell it now because I want the tarot card. I'd rather have the tarot card from Superposition. And then also the Saturn card here. Great. Um, both of these things are great. We can take either Saturn here or Temperance. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use Saturn first and I'm gonna use Temperance second in case we get a Fool card. Every Arcana pack has a pretty high chance of giving us a Fool. Um, every shop, whatever consumable card, there's a 1 in 80 chance of giving you that specific consumable card. And so maybe sometimes you want to use your consumable cards before you load the shop. Alright, Celestial Packs are free. I'm going to open the Arcana Pack first in case we get a fool. Um, I do want the paintbrush here. We did beat the big blind. And so having the extra hand size, we get more cards in our Arcana Pack. Um, do I want to pick up, you know, another kind of value generator here? Since I already removed two sixes from the deck, maybe what we do is we get rid of six cents here and we pick up the business card. Though, if I do the business card, I could play like the five of a kind kings or four kings or something like that for the money. Um... Boss says play only one hand. I think we don't need the business card. I'm gonna hold on to the six cents, but this six cents is not gonna do anything for the next two rounds. That's my prediction, it's not gonna do anything. Um, since I have the money, I'm gonna reroll first in case there's a tarot card that I wanna use right away. Uh, faceless Joker, discard face cards for money. That's gonna be better than six cents. I think we still keep the burnt Joker so that we can get more plutonium, but I think we drop the six cents and we pick up Faceless Joker. I guess before I make that purchase, there's a consideration for if the Arcana Pack does give me a Temperance, I'm going to get one less dollar because this sells for $2 instead of $3. So one in seven chance of getting a Fool. So a Fool or a Temperance card, there's a two in seven chance that I get the good stuff here. Pretty high. Hermit is also good. So we take that. Now Saturn card. And we have a little bit more money I can reroll again. Venus is free. I can reroll again. I don't want to reroll too many times necessarily because, you know, it does have like the increasing cost rerolls. But maybe we're making enough money per round that I can afford an extra reroll here. Pick up the plutonium. Yeah, let's use the plutonium. Sell Venus here. And now, what do I want to do about this? So Pareidolia combo with Faces Joker, that gives us a ton of money. I think I want to keep the Troubadour. Troubadour is going to make it easier for us to find our face cards. Do I need the Burnt Joker? Would I rather have Astronomer for the free booster packs? Or would I have rather have the Burnt Joker to level up my high card, get the Plutonium? I think long term, we're going to get enough Plutonium that I don't need the Burnt Joker. So I'm going to sell the Burnt Joker. I think Astronomer is going to give us more value overall compared to the Burnt Joker. Because I have both of these, because I have both Faceless and Pareidolia here, I can afford another reroll if I want. And I will. All right, we could pick up Michelle here. We could pick up Moon. I think we don't pick up Michelle here. I think we're scoring enough points already. Even the Cavendish, you know, even the times three, we don't really need. So let's go next. And when I say we don't need, I mean we don't need now. We don't need ever. I'm going to save $32 because in the next shop, there's going to be a new voucher that I'm going to want to buy. I'm going to buy both of the booster packs. If there's standard packs, now I'm at the point in my life where I start buying standard packs. All right, I don't really care what I discard. I'm just looking for my low straight. Oh, I forgot. Everything's face cards. Everything is money. I mean, that's fine with me. <laughs> you know, no complaints here. Okay, um, we've got the straight. We've got the blue gold card. We throw away anything we throw away gives us money. 
Here, really, really demonstrating the power of having the extra hand size. I can hold on to a full five card hand and I can hold on to this gold card and I can still discard five cards at a time. Huge. One, two, three, four, five. Even without the bonus cards. Okay, so I said before, you know, like, I don't know if this run looks like a good run, you know, in the beginning. I would say now, by Anti-4, this run is a banger. <laughs> this is quite the setup. We have the deck manipulation power of the super position. We can easily play, you know, get our tarot card every time. We have the money from the Faceless Joker. We have the extra hand size from the Troubadour for our gold card. Yeah, we're banging. All right, uh, between the two of these, again, we're gonna use Saturn first. We're gonna use Temperance second, and then go shop. So there, we use the Saturn card. One in 80 chance we see another Saturn card. There it is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. I wanna open both of these standard packs. Standard packs you don't really need to use right away, so I'm gonna hold off on these. Um, do I want the tarot merchant for the extra tarot cards in the shop? Generally speaking, no. Because again, here we're looking for rare jokers in the shop. We don't want to add tarot cards to the shop. There are 16 basic um, vouchers and there's 16 upgraded vouchers. And then so you might think, oh, if I take this voucher, then I'm not going to see it in the future. And so it removes it from the voucher pool. You know, in the next shop, I get a different voucher. But because there's so many vouchers, blocking just the one voucher doesn't really matter that much. Also, it unlocks the higher level voucher. And so in the future, you just find the higher level voucher. So I don't want this. Um, I don't need this. I don't need agate. I don't need any scoring help. Do I want the extra hand size? So we can already hold six cards and discard five cards. So you get diminishing returns on hand size. Like the first few hand size, the difference between hand size seven and eight is huge. The difference between eight and nine, still pretty big. Difference between nine and 10, much less so. And so like, you know, what that means is like, if you're holding on to five cards, if your hand size is nine, you can discard four at a time right? Compared to when you get to 10, I'm holding on to five and I can discard five at a time. Like that distinction being how many cards can I hold on to? Can I hold on to a full five cards? Like that's a huge distinction. But once I have like 15 cards in hand or like 12 cards in hand, as long as I'm holding on to five and discarding five, then I'm fine. So I don't think we need this. Uh, we don't need throwback, you know, for scoring purposes here. We only want the repeated multiplication. So let's just spend all our money on rerolls. Uh, Uranus is free, so I don't mind seeing it here. We can sell it for a dollar. Moon, we don't need. Greedy Joker again. Holographic, we don't need. Mercury is free also. I'm gonna hold on to these blocking duplicate planets from the shop, now making it a lot more likely that I find another Saturn card. Uh, we don't need the gelato. These two booster packs take me down to 12, or cost me $12, taking me down to 34. So if I re-roll here, I'll still have plenty of money to have maxed out interest, but re-rolls are getting expensive, so I'm gonna stop re-rolling here. And open these standard packs. I'm looking for red seals. I'm looking for purple seals are very good as well. Purple seals give you tarot cards when you discard them. And so later on, what I need to do is I need to replace my jokers with scoring jokers later on, you know, in like anti nine and 10 and, and stuff like that. And so I want to have value generators in my deck instead of value generators upstairs. So I'm looking for a purple seal, just like this blue seal is like a very good value generator, this gold card value generator. Um, so if I don't have a seal, I skip it. Standard pack. By the way, each individual card has a 20% chance of having a seal. And all of the seals are equally likely. Equally likely. So if I open a mega standard pack that has five cards, you have pretty good chance, better than 50% chance of getting at least one seal. 
So here I could pick up another blue seal if I want. Here I can pick up that red seal. It's also a steel card. It's a red steel card. I think I definitely want a red seal. So I'm definitely going to take this. Do I want the, you know, if I am playing the low straights, the superposition straights, do I want this low, this two with the blue seal? The answer is actually no. And the part of the reason for that is I only have two slots here. So I get a tarot card from superposition. I get a plat planet card from the blue seal. If I have two blue seals on the deck, then it is theoretically it's easier. You know, maybe I don't draw the blue seal. Maybe I draw the other one if I have two of them in the deck. Um, but just generally speaking, I don't want to add too many cards to the deck. This blue seal that I have, I can copy it with a death card without adding cards to the deck. Um, I don't want to add cards to the deck. So let's go next. Um, we are going to sell the planet cards to make room. Boss says face cards are debuffed. That's non-issue. Now with version 101, you can preview the boss while in the shop after the previous boss, right? And so, yeah, preview the boss ahead of time. And then that way you have like three rounds, three shops in order to pivot if you need to pivot, but we don't need to pivot. So let's just go next. Okay, I'm looking for just my blue seal. That's it. There's the blue seal. We've done it. We play the straight, that's it. It's not always gonna be this easy, but as long as it's this easy, I accept. Um, I'm gonna use the Saturn card. I'm, we could sell the Devil card. I'm gonna hold on to it. Uh, Venus here. I want this standard pack, this Celestial pack. Let's Before I open the Celestial pack, let's reroll first. We get a Saturn card, we can use it. I do want glass cards. And so here's the thing about glass cards. In a normal run, if I'm only playing to anti-8, what I like to do with the glass cards is I make a card into glass and then for anti-6 and 7, I just discard it. I don't use it. I only use it in anti-8 because it will you know, have a chance of breaking. So I only use it when I need it. If I'm playing like a long endless run, when I see a, a justice card, what I think about is, oh, this is card removal. I wanna smash a card and remove it on purpose. So, I'm gonna hold on to the devil. I think having the gold cards, you know, held in hand are like worthwhile. I can also make a red gold card and get twice as much money rather than getting the red steel card. I don't need the scoring help. I just want the money right now. So, I'm gonna sell this Venus card before I sell the Venus card. Let's open the Celestial Pack while we're blocking the duplicates. We can take the Saturn card. We do have the telescope, I guess. Sorry, I forgot I had the telescope. And because I have the telescope, then it actually doesn't matter if I'm blocking duplicate planet cards. Pick up Justice here. Um, I'm not going to re-roll because if I re-roll, the thing that I'm looking for are, you know, potentially better jokers, but also potentially some tarot cards. And if I get tarot cards, I'm going to replace these. Right. And I already have two tarot cards that I kind of want already. So maybe I don't re-roll. Though maybe Justice is not one of the better ones. So if I replace my Justice card, I guess it wouldn't be that big a deal. Let's re-roll now while they're cheap and then not, you know, spam too many re-rolls in the next shop. Venus here, um, I can't buy it even though it's free here because I'm, you know, blocking here. That's okay. Obelisk, doesn't matter. Obelisk, we could probably, you know, if you are playing a long endless run, you can probably stack this up pretty high, right? You could probably get this up to, I don't know, like times 20, but that's still way less than, you know, what the idol would do. So, so the idol by itself is times 32 if you have nothing else. Idle with red seals is times a thousand, right? Idle with sock and buskin is times a thousand. Let's open the standard pack. Looking for a purple seal. We could take the nine here for the money. I think the, for the purposes of like a really long endless run, I think the gold seals are just the worst one. Um, I don't need any of this help to score. So I'm just going to skip and go next. Saving the rest of my money for interest. Oh, 
Okay, what do we want to turn into glass? That's what the question is. What do we want to turn into gold? That's also like an important question. Let's start by just discarding the high cards. And then that gives us time to think. Uh, we have extra fours we can discard. Okay, we've got an extra stone card. Okay, the thing that I want to turn into gold is my red seal. I want to make a red gold card because I don't need the steel right now. I can always turn it into steel later with more tarot cards in the future. Um, if I don't get the red gold card, I'll use the devil on... I already have a five here. So maybe what I want to do is target a four. Though I guess here I have to play the four, so maybe we target a three. Okay. What do I want to turn into glass? I think the thing that I want to turn into glass, and this might come across as a little bit controversial, like right now the thing, the way that we score is by playing these aces, ace straights. I can turn a six into glass and then I can play it here and then just smash. Let's try that. Or I can turn the ace into glass. Let's play the six. And then smash. I'm actually going to play the high card. You know, in the future, if I do switch to high card with my telescope, Maybe I want to play the high card now. Smash, yeah, nice. All right, we play the straight. Even without the bonus card, it already wins. Here's the thing about Superposition. Superposition only gives me one card per round, right? It only gives me one tarot card per round. Cardomancer does that, but Cardomancer is an uncommon. This is a common. Cardomancer costs six bucks, so this only costs four bucks. So, you know, what do you want? from a common. All right, fool, I can give it another glass card for card removal. And so like, you know, I value card removal very highly. That way I can just get the same hand every round, round after round, you know, for the purposes of the idol also, you want to remove all the cards from your deck. And so I think hangman is worth 20 bucks to me. I'd rather have hangman rather than 20 bucks. Is a glass card worth 20 bucks to me? The answer is mm, probably not. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Saturn card here in case there's a Saturn card in the shop. I'm going to hold on to the Fool. Um, I don't need a second Saturn card here. Now we're starting to reach the saturation point where, like I said, we already have level 14 straights, starting to get diminishing returns on leveling up our straights. Like as a percentage, each additional Saturn card is not a very big percentage of my current score. I'm holding on to the Fool to copy Death, Hangman, Hermit, Temperance, there's a lot of good hits. We have a nice amount of money here. Let's, before we open these standard packs, let's do some re-rolling in the shop. We could pick up the ticket now. We could play the gold card. We could play the gold three. Um, is that better than, you know, what the other stuff that we're doing here? So this is what I was saying about the ticket, you know, because it's a common, if we pass on it, you do get to see it again pretty easily, pretty consistently. I'm going to pass on the ticket. We definitely don't need the smiley face. Definitely a combo with pareidolia here, but we don't need it. Um, we do have this, by the way. The boss says all of our face cards are debuffed. You know, with pareidolia, all of our cards are face cards. That's a little bit awkward, to be honest. We could sell this. So what are we going to miss out on? We miss out on money with the face cards. We also miss out on the blue seal with the face cards. But as far as like scoring purposes, it's okay to have the debuff. I think I'd rather keep the pareidolia. Maybe. There's a good chance we replace it if we roll something in the shop. Golden ticket's not it. Later on it could be, but right now it's not it. Let's re-roll. Uh, trio is not something that we need. Splash is not something that we need. We can reroll again. Take another Saturn card here. Could pick up a Devious Joker that we don't need. These are going to cost me 10 bucks, taking me down to 41. I'm not going to get any money this round. 
So if I spend 18 bucks and I go down to like 23, I'm not gonna reroll anymore. We said we don't want the tarot merchant. Let's open these standard packs. Um, Red Seal 4, I think we don't need. We can skip both of these. And we can skip these. Really what you want is just one blue seal, just one red seal. And then later on when you figure out what jokers you have, when you figure out what your build is, then you can start copying them with the death card. Don't add more than one. The first one is very important because you can copy it with a death card, but additional ones you don't need. Um, yeah, we don't reroll here because I want to save my money for a future voucher in the next shop. Um, Fool now for a Saturn card, I guess. We struck out a little bit there. Maybe we do sell Peridolia. Like I said, in the next shop with the re-rolling money, probably we're going to find a replacement. So we can sell Peridolia here. My face cards are still debuffed for the faceless choker, but I am going to get the gold money here. So it's worth it. In my opinion, it's worth it. All right, we got the two here. Oh, we do have the queen. We can go for the jack. We could go for the high straight instead of the low straight. I am just missing the three, so I guess we'll keep going for the low straight. Okay. One more time looking for the low straight. Um, I don't, well, I only discard five cards, so there we go. So we're missing the threes still. That's honestly very awkward very dubious here um what's the backup plan backup plan is we play high card for basically nothing all right ship it we do get the three the odds of us hitting the three there, honestly, bad. Honestly, not good. Honestly, not good odds. <laughs> Though the odds of us not, like going into the round, the odds of us not hitting the three are like, you have pretty good odds of hitting the three, right? We've demonstrated that in the previous rounds, but like once there's four threes in your last 15 cards, the odds of you drawing it are less good. Anyway, here's the straight, we get to survive. This early on in the run, I know we're an hour in, but you know, I still consider this like kind of early on in the run. This early on in the run, I feel fine taking these, you know, a little bit higher risks potentially. If you were concerned about it, we can stop doing this. We can stop doing super position, just like, just play straights like a sane person. Greed is good. Do I want this petroglyph for the minus one discard so what you can do with these with the hieroglyph and the petroglyph this is definitely something that i want this is going to buy me more time this is going to buy me you know three additional rounds and also i get another ante that has another voucher um, i can wait until after the big blind to buy this so let's go standard pack and arcana pack takes me down to 46 dollars. i can reroll first Uh, we can pick up some plutonium for free. Reroll again. Plus 20 from Fortune Teller. Reroll like one more time. Okay. Maybe Luchador is going to help me with a stinky boss situation. All my clubs are debuffed. That's a little bit awkward here. I do have the five of clubs as my blue seal. Maybe I do want the Luchador for that reason. Though maybe... I could just find some kind of suit changing tarot card anyway. Let's do this. Let's open the standard pack. Uh, purple seals are premium. Purple seals are huge. Since I have the fancy five, let's make another fancy five. Um, now open the arcana pack. 
Okay, so I could take the money here. I could get 20 bucks from the Hermit. I do get a death card, but I don't have any of my nice fancy cards. Is like pretty disappointing given how big my hands are. We've got the Yowie hands again. Let's take the 20 bucks here. And with that, I could afford one more reroll if I want. I don't think I need the Luchador. We could take an eight ball. That's probably not what we end up doing. Acrobat is not what we end up doing either. So let's just go next, holding our money for interest. All right, Plutonium we sell. I'm gonna make some lucky cards. Every lucky card has, on average gives you a dollar. 1 in 15 to give you 20 bucks on average is $1. Let's discard for, we looking for the five now. One, two, we do get the five, but it's purple. So maybe I'm supposed to throw it away. I'm gonna throw away the red steel card. I do have this blue five, right? I can always just play the blue five. Trying to, you know, draw face cards for the faceless joker as well. Considering whether or not I want to throw away this three, and I think the answer is probably. Fool for Hermit. Yes. Discard three face cards. Yes. Okay, so I get the straight. I have the extra three, I have the extra fives. This is perfect. Um, I'm actually not gonna discard yet. I'm going to play the extra fours. Try to draw a king or a queen. Um, yeah, pretty good chance that we hit it for the money. Ah, uh, rats. That's okay. Um, we just play the straight. Let's go again, threes and fives as my lucky cards, or do I wanna go fours and twos? I'm gonna go fours and twos. Um, so here we have kind of the situation where if I have these two fives in hand, if I don't have my straight and I need to dig, I can throw away this five and then keep the blue five, right? Same with the threes. I can throw away the three of diamonds that I can hold on to the gold card. And so, I'll put the lucky cards on fours and twos instead, because those I won't end up discarding. All right, ship it. Nah, never lucky. Saturn here, devil, go next. To the moon, this gives me additional interest. It doesn't increase the interest cap but it increases the inc interest rate and so currently it's one dollar per five this would raise it to two dollars per five in total this gives me plus five per round um i think that's definitely the kind of thing that i'm interested in taking let's try the buffoon pack as well um swash bonkler i don't need but i can always just sell it and then pick up the to the moon here strength card turning more queens into kings jacks into queens i can turn my red steel card eventually turning into a red king is like very powerful so we'll pick that up um petroglyph i buy in the next shop arcana pack now that i have tarot cards upstairs i'm going to go ahead and open the arcana pack now Okay, Fool gives me a Saturn card, or I can take Temperance for 16 bucks. Would you rather have 16 bucks or a Saturn card? Rather have the money so that I can reroll in the shop and I can get better jokers. Currently, we have some, these are all very mid. These are all very medium jokers. I don't have any real bangers yet, except for Superposition is kind of a banger. Let's go Queen and 10 here with the Strength card. And then with the gold card, what do I want to turn into gold? Maybe, maybe I do want one gold king. Most of the time I'm going to discard it, but in the end, if I do get the Baron, it is a rare joker, so I'm not going to get it all the time. But if I do get the Baron, it's going to be nice to have some gold cards. And then we'll take the temperance here. Cool, now we have reroll money. 
let's replace this faceless joker um rough gem doesn't really do it golden ticket again ah rats i think faceless joker is still better than golden ticket for now until we start getting the red gold cards re-roll here we could get the nine Oh, nine is only plus three dollars per round so we're gonna pass on that gift card is huge so you know every arcana pack has a one in four chance of giving you sorry one in seven chance of giving you temperance two in seven chance of giving you either temperance or fool if you're going for either so pretty good chances pretty good chances that you get temperance a lot and gift card helps us raise the value of our joker so that we get more money from our temperance so gift card is definitely better than to the moon gift card is probably better than faceless i think that's how i feel okay are how do these things compare to astronomer i think i'd rather hold on to the astronomer so Pick up the gift card here. I do value the Troubadour for having the extra hand size. More than anything, I value the extra tarot card for the deck manipulation. More than just like the raw money. All right, Sun and World. I will take the hearts here and then go next. So let's make some Kings of Hearts. If we can. So we want to discard the purple five. We have the two, three, four, fives. We can discard these face cards if we want to get the money from the faceless joker. And that's probably what we should do. Then I can use the sun on some different kings in theory, or I can just use it now. I'll go ahead and use it now. This jack can turn into a king in theory. All right, I'm just looking for an ace. World, we don't need. We don't need spades. Uh, we got the lucky two. Extra five. We do have the straight in hand. Do I want to discard a four? Nah. Let's go for more face cards. And not necessarily a lot more face cards, but just a little bit more. Okay, so we do get a gold king. I get... Five bucks if I throw it away. Tempting. Probably I do that. Actually, yeah, I just do that. Ace, two. Ah, uh, I'd like to get another three for the money. So I think what we do is we play this pair. Um, it cost me a dollar, it cost me a hand. I have a 3 out of 20. I don't have a very good chance of getting the 3, so I think I'm just going to play the 3 here. That's okay. Alright, to beat Anti-8, the final boss, you only need 100,000 points. And so, you know, I could just play two straights. We already have enough to win the game. Now it's just a matter of, like, collecting as much incremental value as we can uh, we can make some steel cards sure we have telescopes so these are guaranteed to give me saturn cards sure all right now's the point where maybe i don't need to level up my straights anymore maybe i can start taking some plutonium you know now that i have level 20 straights anyway right um I do want this. I do want the steel card. I think also here we go back in time. We take the petroglyph. Um, Michelle we don't need. Dusk. So like long term, long term, you know, if you get the idol, you want to get re-triggers. Dusk is another re-trigger joker. Doesn't care whether you're playing high cards or low cards. It's going to re-trigger all of your cards. So like that could be something that I want in my end game. If that's true, am I willing to get rid of one of my value generators? One of the benefits of taking it now is gift card will start accumulating value on it now. Because whatever value that I accumulate on, let's say, Faceless Joker, once I sell the Faceless Joker, then I sell it, I'm going to lose all of my temperance value. You know, just like egg, once you get rid of the egg. 
I think that's fine. I think... Okay, of all of these, probably the Astronomer is the weakest link. I think with the extra hand size, Faces Joker is actually like pretty decent. So, get rid of the Astronomer. Pick up Dusk. Normally I would say, Dusk, I don't want this early. I want to wait until I get either Idle or Baron first, and then decide that this is something that I want to do. But because I have Troubadour with the minus one hand, because I have the Hieroglyph with the minus one hand, this is actually pretty reasonable to do. Most of the time you don't want to play all of your hands because it costs you money to play all your hands, but if I only have two hands, then it is fine. Also, because I have the gift card specifically, I think Dusk is worth taking here. Let's re-roll. Um, yeah, spin the wheel. And go next. Spend down to 26 bucks. Um, I'm going to save my money for the next shop voucher. Um, a little bit awkward, we have our clubs are debuffed, but, you know, you just gotta live with that. So, let's discard. We wanna make sure that we get a straight, so maybe it's worthwhile for us to discard a two here. Um, we have the straight, that's it. Um, I'm gonna discard the debuffed jack first. Now, if I discard these with the king, we get the money from the faceless joker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I want to make a wild card? Maybe I could have made a wild king. Maybe I will make a wild king in the future. I don't need to make room because I don't have the blue seal yet. Um, what do I want to make into steel? If I am going to have steel cards, how about steel kings? You know, if I'm going for the baron, I would like to have steel kings rather than glass kings. If I'm going for the idol, maybe I want glass fives, but steel kings. We can play the straight. Hold on to the lovers to block duplicates. $18 temperance, now $23 temperance. There is a consideration for, you know, every round I get $5 more value from the gift card, so maybe I should hold on to the temperance. But another consideration, as long as I'm holding on to the temperance, I can't get more temperance, so probably we should use it instead. Oh, crystal ball is huge, hugely beneficial. The main thing that I want to do with Crystal Ball is hold on to planet cards to block duplicate planets. But you can also just, you know, in the shop when we're re-rolling, pick up multiple tarot cards is pretty good. Um, I still open standard packs. I'm looking for a polychrome card. Looking for a polychrome card. That's it. Can I get a polychrome card? The odds of you getting a polychrome card, individual card being polychrome, is something like 0.3%, like it's less than 1%. So not good odds. So the only way that you get it is by opening more packs. And then also it's very important for you to get the seals early, which we did. Um, we can buy Earth here and hold on to it. Also, holding on to the lovers here, we get extra value from the gift card, so that's cool. I wasn't even thinking about that. Do I want to pick up Northern Lion here? I think, you know, comparing my value generators here, maybe superposition is not the thing that we need to be doing anymore. <laughs> no, I really want some better tarot cards. I think what we do here, I think we can get rid of Dusk. We can find better things later if we have the money, and the way that we get the money is by picking up Northern Lion here. It is a combo with gift card as well. Let's pick up Uranus here before we re-roll. There's the Brainstorm. Okay. So what now, Brainstorm can copy Superposition. Brainstorm can copy both Superposition and Faces Joker. It's incompatible with the gift card, 
but it can copy those. Okay, in that case, I guess we do get rid of Northern Line here. I mean, we have the gift card anyway. Let's save our money and go next. Boss is extra large. We already know that we can beat that with just a regular straight. Ace, nine, eight. Okay, we'll discard all of these. There's my face cards. I also get the five here. Okay, so I'm gonna get a tarot card here. Let's sell planets. I know we just bought them. I know we just spent money on them, but it is still worth it to pick them up and hold on to them. Okay, I can pick up glass cards. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a card into glass and then I'm gonna smash. So here, nine, eight, five, three. Since I already have the blue seal in hand, I'm gonna go glass nine. And then let's smash. Um, I don't wanna play the pair, right? I just wanna smash with the high card. If you didn't already know, Brainstorm doesn't copy additions, so it doesn't copy the holographic or foil effects. Alright, I have one more discard. Unfortunately, we don't have face cards, but we do have a gold card in the deck that we can try to discard for. Um, steel card, doesn't matter, but I don't hate having it. I'll hold on to Earth rather than holding on to Lovers. So, Ace... Five, four, three, two. Oh, crystal ball is great. Okay, we'll use the Saturn card before we go into the shop. We have two celestial packs here, so you know if we had the astronomer, this is eight bucks here. Oh well. Ah, I forgot this. I forgot brainstorm copying superposition. I could have sold the Earth card. I could have got two tarot cards. That's actually huge. <laughs> That's actually, I gotta pay attention to that. That's really important. All right, let's open the Celestial Packs. I'm looking for Plutonium, but I will take Saturn cards as a backup. Show me some Plutonium. All right, we can, we don't need this business card. We can reroll here. Um, Uranus. I don't have a whole lot of money to spend on rerolls, so I'm not gonna pick this one up. I like to hold the planet cards if I'm doing a lot of rerolls. If I'm doing a few rerolls, then it's not worth holding onto them to, just to block duplicates. So let's reroll one time. We could get the bull here. So like for scoring purposes, that's huge, right? Um, you know, especially if we wanna do like high card or something like that. Um, but I don't need the score, so I don't need the bull. We just go next. All right, in the next round here, we get rid of the Earth card because I'm going to use super. I'm going to use brainstorm to copy superposition. Um, we can remove eight and nines. Perfect. We can discard three kings for our faceless Joker. We can discard one of these fives and the ten. Perfect. This is actually huge. Okay, there's the nine. I can try to smash again, and I think I will. So we'll go nines, eight. Six we don't need, extra three we don't need. Let's smash. Nice, now down to 44 cards on the deck. Honestly, round 20, 44 cards on the deck. That's still a lot of cards on the deck. Um, aces, 10, eight, we have an extra five we can discard. Looking for face cards. Nice, we can discard all these face cards. Um, discard the king here, keeping the threes. And now superposition. So ace, two, three, four, there's the five. So because we did petroglyph, because we did hieroglyph, we have, after drawing, doing all the discards, we have 15 cards left in the deck. Like, that's pretty dubious, to be honest. I would categorize that as dubious something we could consider 
and this came up in like the last gold run that I did. I said there's diminishing returns on the hand size. Do we need Troubadour? Is it better to have instead of plus two hand size, if I have an extra hand, I can just play a hand as a discard. Is that better? It might be. Honestly, it might be. Um, these tarot cards we hold on to. Celestial pack looking for plutonium. There we go. Standard pack. Okay, we could get a red gold card is like high value, but we already have the one red seal, so I'm gonna skip it. Now, we have a decent amount of money for rerolling. Now is the time do we wanna hold on to planet cards? Just for a couple rerolls. I think, nah, I don't need to. There's the bloodstone. Like I said, if we make the hearts, it will come back and it did. Is it too early for the Bloodstone? Is the Bloodstone good enough? Maybe we replace the Troubadour? You know, round 20 is still pretty early. If I had like a generic thing like a Brainstorm or Blueprint, I would take it. If this was the Idol, the Idol is like way more powerful. I would take the Idol even though the Idol, we don't have the setup yet. I would take a Baron. I would take a Mime. I'm gonna pass on the Bloodstone. It's replaceable. I think we don't take Saturn here. On one hand, hey, it's only three bucks. Uh, on the other hand, eh, the benefit is not that great anyway. So I'm just gonna keep re-rolling here. Uh, bull, again, we don't need. Let's save the rest of our money for interest and let's just go next. Let's discard some face cards and purple cards. I think what I wanna do here, this five, do I want to make it into steel? That way, if I copy it in the future with a death card, it'll be a purple steel card instead of just a purple card. Um, with the sun, I'd like to use the sun on kings, which maybe I don't have yet. So maybe what we can do, we can play the eights and a three. I don't think I want to do that. Let's go ahead and just make kings and jacks into hearts. So now I have four kings here. At some point we do want to play the flush five so that we can start leveling that up. Like I said, maybe we go for the Baron, maybe we go for the flush five. We could go leave ourselves open to either direction. So I should consider how are we going to make our flush five actually. Sun? Yeah, that's gonna help. So, tens and eights here, we have an extra two. I'm actually gonna play the two of hearts so that I don't accidentally play a straight flush. I'm gonna play this, saving my discards for the faceless joker. Nice. Now, as far as like making hearts, we're gonna discard these. or I'm trying to decide if I want to discard first or if I just want to use the sun now. I have like a decent number of kings in the deck. I'm just going to use it now. Eh, let's not use it now. So let's discard a three and a king here. I want to hold on to the steel card just in case. Okay. Let's discard ace, eight, five. Keep the five, throw away a four. Looking for another three, looking for some kings. So I do get the sun card. I'm going to hold on to the sun card. You know, now that I have the crystal ball, I have the room for it. Though I guess superposition plus blue seal, then I don't get to... Ah, ah, rats. Let's just go ahead and use it. I'm gonna use it on my enhanced cards because those are the cards that I'm least likely to remove, you know? So ace, two, three, four, five. There's my straight. I guess I didn't need the steel card. I was worried about it for no reason.
100,000, that's enough to beat the final boss, right? We get another glass card so we can smash. We get Hangman. All of this is great. This is huge. Grabber, also great. Negative popcorn. Uh, anything but popcorn. Okay, we could take to-do list. We could take a standard pack here. Purple seal. Is it worth it? Adding another card to the deck if it's specifically a purple seal. I think it's worth it. Rather than like another King of Hearts, a steel King of Hearts. I said I was going for Kings of Hearts. I mean, we'll get the Kings of Hearts eventually. You, if you're going to play long endless runs, you got to be patient. So let's... Purple Seal. Generally, I suggest this. What I say is get a lot of Purple Seals first. And then once you have the ability to generate lots of tarot cards, then you can do really wacky stuff to your deck. It'll all come together later. Let's invest in our ability to make tarot cards. Uh, before I open the Arcana pack, maybe I'm going to reroll first in case I get some more tarot cards that I want to use. I definitely want to use both of these, but maybe I can get some more. Um, do I want the to-do list? I only have, now I have an extra hand. The grabber is actually huge because a grabber, extra hand, that's an extra discard. Hermit here, huge. Saturn, we said we don't need. Maybe we take it anyway, even though we don't need it. Mercury. Sun. Yeah, maybe we take the sun here. Now we can open the Arcana pack. I'm going to use all of these. Okay, order of operations. First, let's go make hearts. Rather than go for the queen here, I'm going to put it on the 10. Okay, because queen I could remove, 10 I want to turn into a king, red steel king is like pretty powerful. Um, probably among all of these other things here, I probably want the money. What cards do we want to remove from the deck with the hangman? That's the question. Um, I don't need to decide now. I can save these and just use them in the next round and I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I don't want to remove queens that can turn into kings. I want to keep my um, low straight for the super position. Like what cards would I actually remove? I would remove eight, seven, six, nines, jacks. I have plenty of cards to remove. You know, I don't need to remove this stone card. Let's take the hermit here. Is there something that I want to turn into glass? Not yet. We'll go smash next round. We'll go smash. Can I get a fool card? Do I want to spend $10 on a reroll? The answer is no. All right, now tens and jacks, we remove. Honestly, we remove. Maybe we discard first, right? Because I've got brainstorm on faces choker. Is now the time that we play the flush five just to unlock it? I think I'm gonna go for it. Rather than play for the straight, or like in addition to playing the straight, we do have the extra hand to help us dig. So let's discard the king and these jacks here. We have an extra three that we can discard for the money. We have the purple seal here. I think nine and eight we can remove. Nice. Um. I think we hold on to the glass card. We don't have to smash yet. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna throw away a three and I'm gonna hold on to the gold one. I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up playing the three, but it's gonna be fine because I need my kings for my flush five. If I'm gonna go for it, might as well go for it now. Maybe a good time to go for it is when I already have a sun card, that's a good time to go for it. When I already have a death card, that's a good time to go for it. But we can probably hit it. Let's get the purple seal here. Tower card. I can turn this eight into stone. I'm gonna save a discard so that I can discard my purple seal if I draw it. I can discard my face cards if I draw them. Let's do this. 
So I'm out of aces, straight up. Um, I'm basically out of twos, but I have extra fours and fives. So maybe we actually, we throw away one of the fours or fives. Let's throw away the five. And ship it. Now discard. Or there's the kings. There's the flush five. Let's play it. That unlocks the planet card for us. It's not worth a lot of points. We get the purple seal. We were saving the discard for the purple seal just like we drew it up. Discard the five. We could discard the ten here. We get a death card. Death card, I can make another king if I want. I can make another red steel card. I think what I want to do with death cards, I want to save them for purple cards. Make extra copies of the purple cards. So I'm just, I'm actually just going to hold off on this. Let's. If I am going to make extra purple cards, the fives are purple, right? Which means I can remove a five. I can go smash here. Let's go smash. I'm not going to get the blue seal here. That's okay. Smash. No smash. Mm, that's okay. Okay, star we don't need, hermit we use for 20 bucks. We hold on to the death card. Strength. Strength is okay. I can I really want to do I really want to turn this red steel card into a king. So we'll pick up the strength card here. We'll open up this mega standard pack. Mega standard pack doesn't give me anything. Mainly I'm I'm looking for polychrome. Polychrome with a red seal. It's easier for you to turn a red seal card into a, a sorry easier for you to turn a polychrome card into a red seal card compared to turning a red seal card into polychrome because the you know if we look at the spectral cards here the aura has a one in six chance of giving you polychrome on top of a red seal whereas like deja vu you just put the red seal on a card that's already polychrome so i'm looking for polychrome cards and then we can turn them into red seals later um, I do want the Celestial Pack for the Plutonium. Maybe Plutonium. Um, photograph is okay. Okay, if I play my Flush 5. Maybe we start playing Flush 5s, start leveling up Flush 5s instead of playing these straights with the Superposition. Maybe we sell Superposition, we pick up the Photograph here. Photograph I can copy with the Brainstorm. I don't think I'm there yet, but I'm close. I'm close to there. Let's reroll. Jupiter we don't need. We could buy it to block the duplicates. I don't know how much I'm going to be rerolling in this one shop. To-do list will give me money for a straight. Sorry, what's the boss? Uh, boss is minus one hand size. That's nothing. Uh, we could get the four feeners. That makes it way easier for us to get our super position value. Maybe instead of the troubadour here. Uh, I don't think we need it. I think I don't want to spend $10 on a reroll, so let's go ahead and pick up the plutonium here. And then go next. Alright, in the next round, I'm looking to discard here. Copying the purple stone card is actually pretty good. So, you know, in the end game, like I said, the idol will not count the stone card, so I could turn this 8 into a stone card. I actually feel really good about that. Um, let's sell the star. That way I can discard my two purple cards. Here, crystal ball flexing its value. Um, I'm going to discard the five. I don't really want to smash it. Maybe I will. Um, we can discard aces. All right, let's make more kings. That's the plan. Uh, lovers we don't need. Lucky cards. Maybe. You know, maybe a lucky ace, maybe a lucky two. I guess I don't need to commit right now necessarily. There's 10 we discard, there's four we discard. Extra two we can discard. Give me the money. Mm -hmm. Six, two, 
extra four. So all of these, I'm actually gonna save a discard in case I get a purple seal, in case I get more face cards for the faces joker. Let's just play, high card. Okay. Um, discard the face cards for the money. Okay. Um, do I want to try to dig for the gold card? Cost me a dollar. Nah. Well, I could also get a three and I could get three bucks here. It's worth it to go for the three. Okay. Um, in that case, I can play this five. Oh, I'm supposed to use the strength there on the queen. Ah, that's awkward. Mm, my bad. That's a that's a my bad situation. All right, um, we get rid of lovers. We can use the magician on the ace and the two here. Maybe an ace and a three. One, two, three, four, five, and save the strength for the queens. Copy superposition. Smash. Right, only three fives left in the deck. That should be fine. All right, here, let's use the Celestial Pack. I guess Saturn. Standard Pack for another Polychrome. If not, we can go next. Reroll. Temperance for 50 bucks. That's the thing, that's the whole reason why. We've been holding on to the gift card. Now it's 50 bucks every time. Try again here. Blackboard, delayed gratification. Now we have a ton of money. Maybe I don't feel as bad spending extra money on re-rolls. Mars, hallucination. Do I want hallucination? How, where are we at with this gift card, right? All of these things are like 10 bucks each. These things are replaceable. Eventually I am going to sell these things, correct? And so whatever value that my brainstorm has, that's gonna carry my temperances in the future. I think what I wanna do, I think I wanna get rid of the superposition. Then get hallucination instead. Hallucination with brainstorm, like that's a pretty good combo. Maybe I can do both if I'm gonna do both. Maybe I don't need the Troubadour anymore. Not having the extra hand size makes Faceless Joker harder to do. Do I need Faceless Joker? No, let's, uh, let's sell the Troubadour. Yeah, this'll be fine. All right, in that case, go next. I guess here we have minus one hand size is like kinda awkward. So we play this straight. Ah, uh, disappointing. So let's count it up, right? We've got three discards, we've got four hands here. If I use three hands, three discards, that's six total. If I go five cards at a time, six times five is 30. So I get to see 30 new cards. That's not everything, but that's like pretty close. Or maybe, you know, if I go four cards at a time, times six, that's 24. Oh, look, the deck is beautiful here. We have no more eights and nines. Sevens are gone, except for the seven in our hand here. Beautiful, beautiful. I think we'll be fine. Claim, we'll be fine. In that case, we're light on fives. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go ace, two, three, four. Well, I'll go six, seven, ace, two, three. Uh, let's play high card. Saving our discards for money. Now we're being greedy. Okay, we get the five here. We get the face cards here. We can use the strength on the jacks. They're not queens, but now they are. Um, yeah, I feel fine about that strength card. Ah, I should have used the tower on my sixes and my sevens so that I can remove them. What else can I turn into stone? I could turn tens into stone. Maybe I'll do that. So now I can get the money. 
I think now I'm in a position where we throw the five and also we throw the four. Ship it. Okay, so we get the five here, we get the five, we get the two. I have two more twos left in the deck. I have, I think what I want to do is maybe do something like this. Two more fours, two more twos. So these are both disposable. I have two more aces, so this is disposable as well. We have three threes. Yeah, maybe we hold on to the ace. If I hold on to the ace, it makes it harder for me to find my three. Like that's a consideration. Let's sell the Hierophant that we don't need. Use the Temperance for the money. So now only $40 because we sold some, our Troubadour. Something to keep in mind. I want to hold on to gift card for maybe three more rounds if possible. That would be optimal. Um, I need to find my three. Basically, that's it. I have more purple seals in the deck, so I'm going to play the kings. All right, we get the three. We can discard ace. We could discard purple. We get a gold card. How about a gold ace? How about this jack? I could turn it into stone to remove it. Or maybe I hold on to the stone. No, we use it here. Because I'm going to get tarot cards. There we go. Playing with fire a little bit, to be completely honest. All right, temperance, and we'll hold on to the moon in case there's duplicates. Uh, we want to copy hallucination with brainstorm. Clearance sale, by the way, since it reduces the cost of things, it also reduces the sell price. And so for the purposes of temperance, this is going to reduce the sell price, which is like pretty stinky. So maybe before I do this, I do my shopping, actually. At least I'm going to re-roll first. We got a ton of money here because we got the two temperances. Strength, sun, are those things that I want? Maybe. I have another king here. I have queens I can turn into kings. Yeah, so maybe I want both of these. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pull the trigger on this clearance sale. Uh, we sell the moon here. We open the arcana pack. Gives us priestess. So I don't have anything that I want to turn into hearts. I don't have anything that I want to strength up, to be honest. Pretty awkward, honestly. Maybe... Maybe I don't need these. Let's make some... Six and seven, I don't really care that much about being hearts. I'll use the strength card. I'm just gonna use the tarot cards because the hallucination is gonna give me more anyway. Um, do I care about lucky cards? Maybe a lucky three and a lucky two. Okay. I'm gonna sell Uranus. Standard pack. All right, tower card, magician here. Uh, glass card, two. I think we don't need. By the way, you know, this question of like, what's better, Hallucination or Cardomancer? Cardomancer guarantees you get one tarot card every round. Hallucination is one in two chance per booster pack. So if you buy two booster packs, on average, that's going to give you one tarot card per round. If you buy two booster packs, which maybe you don't. But here's the difference. So Hallucination is better, in my opinion. Here's why. Because... You get the tarot cards, you can use them right away in the shop. I spawn the tarot cards in the Arcana pack, I use them. I spawn more tarot cards, I use them. And then I re-roll in the shop. I've used my tarot cards so I can buy more and I can go into the next round, holding on to tarot cards. Whereas like with Cardomancer, Cardomancer doesn't generate the tarot cards until after you leave the shop. And so if you're re-rolling in the shop and you're picking up tarot cards, then Cardomancer doesn't have room to give you tarot cards. 
And so in my opinion, hallucination better. Also superposition better than cardomancer because superposition gives you the tarot cards at the end of the round rather than at the beginning of the round. All right, let's go ahead and re-roll here. Eight ball we don't need. Eight ball is better than superposition, probably. I mean, not currently, but you know, in theory. Hangman is basically exactly what we want. Death card is also basically exactly what we want. We could get rid of this magician. We keep the tower because turning stuff into stone counts as removing it from the deck for the purposes of the idol. Also, mail-in rebate is a common that d operates kind of the same way. Um, we could pick up Northern Lion here. I think we don't need to, like we said, because we have the gift card already. Because I have these three good tarot cards, I'm going to leave the shop now rather than re-roll and see more tarot cards. Boss says D-level our hand. That's a little bit sad. Okay, switch to the Faces Joker so we can discard for money. At some point we will get Eris. At some point we will level up our flush five. I don't know, we're not there yet. We'll see. What do I want to use my death card on? What I suggested in the past was make more purple cards, so that's what we're gonna do. We could discard these kings and jacks. Maybe before we discard, let's think about something I want to turn into stone. Maybe I want to remove some cards. I think I'm just going to drop the ace here. Okay, eight, we turn into stone or we remove it. If I do remove it, you know, with the hangman here, maybe what we do, maybe I don't need three aces in the deck. Maybe I remove an ace and an eight here with my hanged man. I mean, I gotta remove all the cards anyway, so I might as well start now while I have it in my hand. Um, I could also, with the death card here, turn the eight into purple. Actually, let's do that. I think I'm at the stage where I can afford to use the tower on an ace. And then discard like this. We can drop a three here, keeping the four, and uh, we don't need the steel card. Okay, world we don't need, empress we don't need. Hangman I can use on a ten. I can use it on a stone card as well. Yeah, might as well. Um, I'm going to play these. And then redraw four cards here, saving my discards for another purple seal. Um, discard the face cards for the money. And then copy the superposition. So ace, two, three, four. If I do get another five, I get the blue seal value. I get the gold as well. So let's try to go for another five. Um, we get an ace here. Let's still, we want to go for the five. Five is like worth a good amount of value. So let's ship it. Ace, two, three, four, five, just like we drew it up. Spend two extra hands, but get three extra dollars and a Saturn card. Straights are only worth 90,000 points. That's something to keep in mind. That's actually a good thing. That allows us to play multiple straights in a round, possibly. I'm gonna use a Hermit card second in case we get a Fool in the shop. Runner, we said we don't need. Spectral pack, I'm gonna hold off on. I'm gonna reroll for more tarot cards first. I'm not gonna open the Celestial pack yet because we use Hermit in case there's a Fool in the shop. Um, I do wanna copy Hallucination here. Uh, do I want more Saturn cards? Now it's only two bucks instead of three bucks. Is it worth two bucks? I would say it's worth two bucks. <laughs> uh, though we do miss out on a Hermit card, so maybe we just keep re-rolling here. Um, Golden Joker, maybe that's a little bit easier than Faceless Joker. I'm going to keep re-rolling here. Maybe I can hold on to Uranus here to block duplicates. 
Campfire is very powerful, but we don't need it. Uh, strength card, two turn. I still need to turn this 10 into a king, so I do think we take the strength card. Um, glass cards are also fine. I can remove a two or a four or a three as glass. We can smash, so maybe we keep the stone card. Maybe now with the spectral pack, it's time to open it up, though I am really realizing now we're not gonna get the hallucination value. Can Hallucination give me better tarot cards than these? Possibly. What can it give me? Um, Death, Hermit, Fool, Temperance. Yeah. Maybe. We don't need Glass. Maybe we don't need the Tower. Let's open the Spectral Pack. Uh, Immolate is great. Let's do that. Regardless. Regardless of what you remove. Even if we remove the red seal, we could get another red seal in the future. Regardless of what you move, remove, having perfect draws, having a smaller deck gives you perfect draws. Having perfect draws is like very powerful, very important. So let's just keep re-rolling now. Maybe, maybe we do open the Celestial Pack now. So how about sell the Hierophant? That way we can get the tarot cards from Hallucination first. We can start leveling up our flush fives so that we can start playing flush fives instead of straights at some point. We can sell the moon here. I think I do want the tower. Uranus again. I'm going to re-roll. Re-roll. Bean. Bean is very good. Short term, very good. Maybe bean instead of hallucination. Mm. Bean gives me extra hand size so I can have extra gold cards for extra value. I'm going to pass on the bean. Um, I'm going to go Saturn. Sure. We already used... What tarot card did we use? Oh, we used Eris card out of the Celestial Pack. So actually I'm going to not pick up Saturn here. Maybe I went to the moon instead of Faces Joker, but Faces Joker I can copy with Brainstorm, so I'm going to keep re-rolling here. Let's pick up Hangman is perfect. So Hangman, Tower, Strength, that's good enough. Let's go next. All right, in the next round here, I'm thinking about what do I want to remove from the deck with my Hangman? You know, probably just these stone cards since we're not using them. Other things that I might want to turn into stone, my six, my jacks. Cool. Strength. Let's discard the five for the tarot card. Discard the three. Cool. Um, I'm going to discard the king as well. Temperance for 45 bucks. Perfect. Um, before we discard here, do I want this king to turn into stone? Or do I want to sell the tower card? Um, do I want to sell the strength card? I think between those two options, we sell tower, we hold on to strength. Alright, so I have the straight in hand. Empress we don't need, Justice maybe. So if I'm looking at the deck here, I've got uh, three fives. I've got extra fours, threes and twos. So maybe I don't feel bad about turning those into glass. Fours, threes and twos, maybe a, a glass four, maybe a glass two here. Uh, I'll go glass four because I have the lucky two. I'll use the strength on the queen and the jack. Discard for the faceless joker. Discard the two here. Copy superposition. Do I want to dig for gold cards? We have 12 cards left in the deck, so I can play it out like this. Um, with four hands, three hands times four cards, I get to see 100% of the cards in my deck. And so that is the power of immolate. Regardless of we lost the blue seal, we didn't need the blue seal anymore. We lost the red seal, we could find another one again later. Perfect. Perfect draws every time. Okay. So ace 5432. Ship it. 
Fool for strength or temperance. I think you know what we're gonna do here. So temperance, fool gives us another temperance. Gift card is huge and Northern Lion as a backup is also fine. Um, standard pack looking for another red seal replacement. We get a polychrome card. That's it. That's the technology. Okay. So with this polychrome four, maybe what I'm looking for now is hack. Idol plus hack, get rid of all these kings. Or if I get the, if I get the Baron, I don't care about polychrome cards. If I get the idol, I do care about polychrome cards. So we'll see what happens. Let's just start with a buffoon pack. Ah, I forgot about this. Copying hallucination with my brainstorm. Uh, again, here we get the bean. Fool for Emperor is not good enough, in my opinion. I'm going to skip here. I'm going to hold on to the Fool. Trying to copy Hangman, trying to copy Death, trying to copy Temperance. Since the tarot cards only cost two bucks, I'm just going to buy World to block duplicate tarot cards. We do get the Idol. So if we're going to do Idol now with the Flush 5, I think we copy these 4s, these Polychrome 4s. We could make Polychrome 5s. I'm going to go Polychrome 4s rather than all these kings. Let's do it. Let's start making diamonds. Um, so if we do this, idle, what do we get rid of? I think we get rid of the faceless joker. Pick up the idol. It is early for the idol, to be honest, but maybe it's late enough that I feel like, uh, I don't know if we're going to find the replacement. And I'm looking for the hack specifically for the retriggers. All right, parking we don't need. Gives us money, but I'm looking for death. Tower. Tower is good with the idol. We could get rid of the world card here. Devil card we don't need. Ramen we don't need. Ticket for gold cards. Again, not doing a whole lot of that. Temperance for 40 bucks. Fool gives us another 40 bucks. A little bit sad that we sold our card that was worth 10 bucks. So we get 40, 80 instead of 100. Eris for our flush fives. Okay, it's starting to come together. At what point do we stop re-rolling? Could pick up the boots here. We don't need the boots. Faceless Joker coming back around. $20 re-rolls, probably we should stop. Probably we should stop. Boss is gonna D-level my hand, but my straight is good enough regardless. Let's try to play a three of diamonds. If I get a three, I can turn it into diamonds with the star. Then those threes of diamonds, I can turn into fours in the future. Let's, doesn't matter what we discard as long as we get our straight. So, discard like this. Now that I have the idol and I'm going for low cards, now queen turns into stone. Get out of here. Kings, done. Get out of here. All right, there's a three. Kings are out. I'm gonna keep the two of spades. Keep the three, the gold three. There's the three of diamonds already. I guess I'll throw away that three. Um, discard a two here, so we're looking for a four. Uh, we should have saved a discard because of the purple seals. That was just a misplay. That was just straight up a misplay. Um, let's play high card. It's gonna D level. I'm gonna lose some plutonium here. Uh, you do what you gotta do. Sad, honestly, sad. Uh, we do get the four here. I am going to take the opportunity to make more fours of diamonds. I think I'll also go five of diamonds here. So five, four, wait, maybe we don't play the four. That way we get the planet card. Still going for those planet cards. Um, the lucky cards, the order of operations doesn't matter here, but we can put them in the front if you want. Um, we can copy the idol with brainstorm here, get another times two, but we know that we don't need it. We'll just copy the superposition.
Cool. Saturn cards, I still use those. Priestess, looking for plutonium here. We could level up straight flushes now. Idol says four of diamonds. Uh, I'm just gonna go next, uh, make sure we're copying hallucination. Here we get the Nacho Tong. We already have perfect draws, so this is plus one dollar. Huge. Standard pack looking for a red seal. Red seal we can, if it's not a red seal, we can skip. Um, this Arcana pack, maybe I'm rerolling for tarot cards first. Maybe we just clear out space. Do I want Burglar? I can copy Burglar with Brainstorm to get the extra hands, but I'm not gonna get my purple seals. So like in theory, in theory, the Burglar turning discards into hands is very powerful because leftover hands gives you money, but purple seals are powerful enough and purple seals are common enough that not having discards sucks. And so in my opinion, actually the red deck is stronger than the blue deck. You can always use hands like discards, but Discards allow you to do this. Purple Seal, Mail-in Rebate, Faceless Joker. Discards are great. Also, sometimes you actually just can't play a hand because you play a hand and it one-shots the round, and so you gotta be conservative about that. Now we've got Sock My Buskin to go with Idol here. And so we could go face cards with the Idol. We could play all these Kings here instead of going for the Polychrome 4. Short term, I mean, that's very powerful. Long term, having the polychrome is like pretty important. The question is like, how long term are we talking? Because I could probably get enough strength cards to turn this four into a king, right? Like, is that, that the kind of long term that we're talking about? In that case, what do I want to get rid of for Sog and Buskin here? Um, are we at the point where we get rid of the gift card? All right, the point where we get rid of hallucination. I, something that's like kind of awkward about hallucination is I'm doing a lot of re-rolling. Maybe we get rid of superposition. That is controversial. Um, yeah, something that's awkward about hallucination is I'm re-rolling for tarot cards in the shop, and then when I get them, I want to buy them and hold on to them before I open the Arcana packs. Sorry, Hallucination. Hallucination is great, but because we have so much money, then of course it gets, it's obsolete, but you know, that's what happens with common jokers, they become obsolete. Let's idle, sock my buskin. And this also opens up us in, in the future. If there is a Baron that comes along, I might drop the idol and pick up the Baron instead. Um, we can make more hearts. Okay, I think we do hearts now. I think we do hearts. We were already doing hearts. I still have a few more kings I want to turn into hearts. Maybe we should open the Arcana pack before picking up Sock My Busk in here. Uranus, Chad, Photograph. Is now the time that we just play the flush five instead of going for the straights for the superposition? No, I'm gonna hold out. I'm gonna hold out even longer. Keep rolling here. Strength, we get Clown for a free roll. So Clown gives you a free roll, but it also makes, you know, normally when you re-roll, it makes the next one cost more. This doesn't increment the cost. And so let's say your re-rolls are five, six, seven dollars. If I use the Clown, it's zero, five, and then six dollars. So with three re-rolls, five, six, seven, or zero, five, six, so it skips the last most expensive reroll is what it does. So Clown, the more times you're rerolling per shop, the more value this has. If I'm rerolling 10 times per shop, this is worth 15 bucks per round. Maybe that's worth more than, you know, some other things that I'm doing. Uh, again here, gift card, having the permanent value for temperance is very important. Having the tarot cards from superposition is very important. So maybe I don't, maybe having two random tarot cards from superposition, maybe that's worth more to me than you know, getting $15 per round from the clown? Maybe. I don't know. I want a death card. That's what I want. I should stop spending my money. We got a couple rounds with like lucky temperances in a row and we got a burst of cash, but we are like on average, money generating is not like this much, so I should stop spending. Okay, here what I'm looking to do, I'm making hearts. 
Uh, four diamonds is okay for this one round, but in the future, I guess we'll just make more hearts. Strength card I can use on a queen to turn it into a king. Um, do I want to turn a three into a four and then play the fours as my flush five? Probably not. Do I want to hold on to the strength card? Maybe. Since I'm not re-rolling anymore, maybe we hold on to the strength card. Rather than use it on one card, we'll use it on two cards. Um, one thing that's like nice that you can do with the idol, if I make wild cards, it's easier to activate the idol. So maybe I'll make a wild four, just in case. Actually, if I got the, maybe the polychrome one, we make wild. And that, you know, makes it more likely that we're going to use it. Maybe let's do that. I did just check the boss. The boss is going to be totally fine. No problem. All right, let's go next. Uh, moon, we definitely don't want. I guess we could hold on to it for the gift card, but Superposition and Brainstorm are going to give us two cards anyway. So let's make some room. Let's get rid of the three here. I'm going to discard the kings and keep the queen. Hangman, yeah. So queens and jacks, I can upgrade. Now I have an extra king. Um, with the hangman, I do want to remove... I want to do this. I want to be able to play my straight every round, but I don't necessarily need extras. And so... Let's remove a two of spades. Let's remove a five of hearts. So five of hearts, two of spades, let's remove those. And then I've got two fives, two fives. Yeah. We have perfect draws, so we don't have to be too worried about it. Um, we can discard the three here. And I'm gonna hold on to the four. Hermit for 20 bucks, yes. So two, three, four, six, king here. Um, save a discard for a purple seal. We'll just play the kings here. We can, eight cards left on the deck. We can play these four. We gotta get our high card up for our, I guess, for our telescope, maybe we get high card for the future in case we get a Baron. Um, we hold the four because we've got the blue seal here. We can ditch a two. Um, so I can play two hands and then I can just, you know, draw four cards. So it's fine. Queen and ace, we can play those. Oh, maybe I shouldn't hold on to the ace. Ah, I'm going to lose three bucks. No, we missed the money. Gold card? Uh, blue gold card? Nah, I'll just make a gold king. Ace, two, three, four, five. Not the most money that we could have gotten. Not bad either. Hangman, perfect. Idol says two of diamonds. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I only need one straight in the deck. I don't need multiple straights. So I'm gonna remove extra twos and threes and fours. We'll get the idol cooking. We'll get it cooking. Emperor. What level flush five do we start doing this? Do we do the photograph with sock my buskin? When do we drop the superposition? These are all good questions. Celestial pack. For Eris, okay. Buffoon pack, maybe. Mime is great with the Baron. Without the Baron, it's significantly less good. Just straight up less good. I think I'm gonna stick with this plan. I'm gonna stick with uh, the idle and sock my buskin plan. So, I'm gonna pass on the mime here, or is this the position where we get rid of super position? Hmm, yeah, we'll skip. 
Maybe we do this. We take the photograph. So. Uh, uh, hmm. I'm gonna pass on the photograph. I think I'm gonna pass. Emperor, we take those. Judgment, mm, Chad, ooh. Chad is very compelling. I think we take the Chad. I think we don't need the superposition. I think, I think we have plenty of rerolling money in the shop, you know? Um, Ancient Joker we don't need, definitely. DNA, we could copy, you know, make more of these polychrome cards. I think we don't want DNA. I think in general you don't want DNA. Bean. No, I think we just go next. So now I don't have to play the straight if I don't want to. That's very nice to know. The idol says two of diamonds. So as far as like cleaning up the deck, I want to keep the polychrome cards separate and I'm just going to use strength cards to like move it up in the world and then get it into a king eventually. Um, I only need one ace, one, two, one, three, four, and five. And so gold ace, it's still an extra ace. I'm going to remove it with a hangman. Um, stone card, I'm actually going to hold on to as well. Now nah, we can remove it. All right, Emperor. Hermit we want. Priestess we can use. Planets we don't need. Okay. Um, what do I want to turn into stone? How many threes do I need? I don't need this three, so I'm going to turn it into stone. Get rid of it. Um, let's discard all these face cards. I'm looking for two of diamonds. This is going to be a pretty powerful combo, Chad, with the idol here. That's going to help us score for a long time. I'm looking for... Let's see here. We could discard the purple seal. Giving us hermit, sure. Okay, this four we keep. Um, this two we could throw away. So I'm looking for a five. I'm looking for a two of diamonds actually. So maybe we throw away these twos and that way we get the two of diamonds. Let's get the retrigger re -trigger on the lucky card for the money. All right, how about we still have purple seals in the deck. So I'm gonna play the three here. I've got five cards left in the deck. Only one discard though. I'm going for that five. Two fives in the deck. One more four. So I can get rid of this four. Ship it. Okay, two purples, discard. Steel, cool. Um, Priestess, maybe. Saturn, medium. Uh, do I want a steel card? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Steel ace. I mean, we could make Derek here with the steel card on the blue seal. Four, five, three, two, ace. And then that's already enough. So I could, you know, copy the idol here with the times twos. I'm going to go three for the money. Saturn card, yeah. Why not? All right, idol says six of hearts. Ah, you stinker. All right, hologram, abstract. Let's look for a red seal. No red seal, so we can skip. Uh, before we open the Arcana pack, let's do some re-rolling. Uh, parking, extra hand size, invisible joker. Invisible joker, we can copy. Idle, we could copy Sock My Buskin here. Also, if you copy them, they do retain all of the value from the gift card. Like, that's kind of important if I copy Brainstorm here. So, I think I'm going to sell 
the Giga Chad and then pick up the Invisible Joker. Um, we could pick up the Chariot for some Steel cards. Neptune, Faceless, Neptune again. Michelle we don't need. $11 reroll is a little bit expensive relative to now I'm making less money per round because I'm making less tarot cards per round. That's something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and open the Arcana pack. So, you know, here demonstrating, we were making a lot of tarot cards. We were making a lot of money per round with the hallucination, with the superposition, with the faceless joker. Now we've kind of cashed out everything and replaced it with these scoring jokers here. Sock my buskin, idol, invisible joker, maybe gonna give us a copy of those. And so like what that means is like short term, I'm gonna be able to score a ton of points with this technology. But for like long term, long endless, like am I going to be able to survive until anti-14? Am I going to survive, survive until anti-16? Maybe not. And maybe the reason why we can't do that is because we're not making a, enough money per round. And so maybe it's better to pass on idle, pass on sock my buskin so that we can get more money earlier and then get the perfect deck manipulation earlier. I think also you just get more purple seals and then then it's fine, then it doesn't matter that our jokers don't do anything money-wise if our purple seals in our deck are good money-wise. Here I've got, I can make a glass card. I'd like to get rid of this six. What I can do is with idle on sixes here, I don't have the superposition. Let's just play the straight that has the six. Um, I'm gonna turn it into glass and then maybe we can smash. Um, I'm gonna make kings into steel cards. You know, in case we get the baron, could happen. Okay, save our money. Um, the boss is going to turn my Joker's face down. I guess I don't really need much technology here, but if I wanted to, let's try to copy the... I want idle on the left. No matter where Brainstorm is, it's going to copy the idle on the left. So let's grab the idle. That's the idle. Idle is now on the left. Um, here's a purple seal I can discard. I have one more five in the whole deck, but I only need one. So I'm gonna discard this purple seal. I'm gonna discard this four as well. We get a steel card, we can make a steel king here. Now that I have the glass six, I actually don't need this ace. So what we can do is I have two twos in the deck. I'm gonna play both of these twos, get the retrigger, uh, I don't have the, what is it? I don't have the Giga Chad anymore. Okay, we've got the four here. I have one more four in the deck, so maybe I don't need this four. Um, yeah, maybe what I'll do is I'll discard these purples. Discard this four, discard this king here. Maybe I'll try to get an extra dollar if possible. I need the two to make a straight. So maybe I'll throw away this king. Strength to turn queens into kings. I have one queen in hand. I also have the polychrome card that I wanna to try to strength up, so that's actually great. I have justice, I can make another glass card. Maybe I'll make a glass four. I have so many extra fours. So let's smash. Um, so now what? I have the straight in hand. I have no more purple cards in the deck. I do have some gold cards that I could try to dig for. Maybe let's go digging for gold. Uh, three cards left in the deck. So I can spend two bucks and then draw the gold card. There's Sock My Buskin on the end there. Uh, we do get the gold card here. So six, five, four, three. We'll play the lucky three for the money. All right, and that's it. I mean, that's the first eight antes. And then now if you want, you know, here's the seed if you want to try this out for yourself, but probably you just spin up a random seed and then start over from the beginning. If we go endless mode now, you know, we can take stock. We've got uh, Invisible Joker one more round on the Invisible Joker. We've got gift card giving, you know, 
Brainstorm is pretty good. We're gonna hold on to the gift card so that we can raise up. Now that I have Idol and Sock and Buskin, these are my permanent jokers. These are the ones that I wanna permanently increase the sell value for my temperances that I get in the future. Um, as far as like the deck manipulation, if I wanna play Flush Five Kings, I can just do that. Um, I have, you know, Flush Five right now is like weaker than my straights, but with, you know, like if I compare these, um, my straights are worth three times the chips and it's gonna be like four times the mold, let's say four times. So three times and four times, 12 times as much for a straight. If I get, you know, enough times twos, that's more than 12 times. So three times twos is eight times, four times twos is 16 times. And that's with just three Eris cards, just level three flush five compared to this level 30 straight here. So, you know, idle if it lands on kings. If I just wanted to score like in one round the most points possible, that would be how we do it. Long term, what we need to do is we need to get rid of the rest of these cards for the idle. We're going to I need to, you know, looking at this in the next round, I need to score like, you know, 200,000 points or something. Uh, I need 500,000 points, right? No, anti nine is only 100,000 and the boss is 200,000. So I don't need to play a straight in order to score 200,000 points. I can score, I can win with just a flush five. Maybe I make one glass king, maybe I make a couple glass kings and then I get the re-triggers from sock my buskin brainstorm and sock my buskin and so while i'm waiting for this while i'm waiting for the deck manipulation for the idol i can do this short term and use a couple glass cards if they break i can replace them you know by re-rolling in the shop for more tarot cards and then once the idol is fully online once i get rid of the rest of this stuff here then i don't need the glass cards anymore so the idol is fickle right it keeps changing you can control it but it is difficult having the extra tarot cards helps. So this is the setup. This is the start to a good endless run so far. The next couple antis could be a little bit challenging. There is some work that we need to do, but this is the setup. And so, you know, we're coming up on three hours here and we're gonna, that's gonna be it for this video, but we are gonna continue this run. And then in the next video, uh, you know, I'll show you how to finish up the deck manipulation and you know how to beat the next you know four or five antis all right folks good luck out there take care